What's happening, troops? Welcome back to another episode. I think the fifth episode now of the May First Touch podcast. As ever, joined by the co-host himself, Jacko. What's happening, mate? What's happening, man? Number five. Number five. Number five. Sorry if about the me, change of put that, <laughs> mate, I like it, eh? You, yeah. Do you play the guitar? Mate, that thing's got my dust, and you can imagine on it. <laughs> but can you can you play it? That's what we want to know. No. <laughs> oh <laughs> my! I, I, I know if I say I would really ask me to do something, and I'm not doing it. <laughs> no. How how many likes on this stream for you to bust the guitar out in the next episode and just play as so, a wee something how something? Been, how many have you been getting on the last couple? I don't remember. It's like it's, it's anywhere between like fifty and a hundred. I, I think. If we can get more than the last one. From like this going up, then I right, okay. <laughs> the it's, it's, the president has been set, mate. And I'm not going to be. Don't expect this to be any good. <laughs> no, we're not. It's we're not expecting. Very, we're not expecting ACDC or anything like. That, do you know what I mean? <laughs> right, okay. Right, trips. So basically, we're going to be going through the Europa League games. The games have actually just finished. And there's just been an absolute madness there in the Motherwell game. Motherwell 2-0 up in the game. Ends up 2 each, down to 10 men. 30 minutes of added time. Added time? Extra time. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be a wee bit mental, wouldn't it? That goes into penalties. And Trevor Carson has saved three penalties in a row. Jack, what are we saying? Wow. I mean, one of the ones, like, you look at it, the Scottish football was getting hindered and stuff. Even though, to be fair, Motherwell should, be, should have been winning that game a bit more comfortably. They've took a hit. They took. They've. they've, they've that's, that takes a lot of character to get two goals scored and a last minute penalty to come through the extra time with with, with ten men going to the penalty shootout and what a fucking blinder that to keep us play there. Unbelievable, unbelievable for Motherwell. Unbelievable for Scottish football. Do you know it's so weird to look at the the score sheets and for Scottish teams out with the old firm to be winning Aberdeen two 0 victory versus Viking FC away from home. They were said to be said like this. This was going to be a hard game for Aberdeen. Aberdeen was supposed to lose this game, or else it was supposed to be a lot closer. Two 0 Ross McCrory gonna go? The Dons. Ross McCrory just on fire at the moment, isn't he? Aye. It's one of the ones where I didn't really, I didn't know how I wanted to feel about it. I don't know if I want to be happy he's playing well because I like him, or sad because he left. <laughs> Heartbreaking, man. Well, I'm sad because I love him. <laughs> I'm sad it's away, man. Are you able to say that you still love him? Nah. Nah. No. Nah, I hate him. I hate, I've can. never liked him. I've never, <laughs> ever liked him. It's He's like just got one of the faces. Oh, no. I kind of love Kenny Miller. I kind of love Kenny yeah. Miller, but you can like him. You can, you, can, you can thank him for what he done, but... Nah. Mate, it's mad. No. The, the Kenny Miller conundrum is mental, eh? But I always just always say, if he was good enough for Walter Smith, good enough for oh, me, 100%. mate. I loved him when he was at us, but... You, not, you, you can't even put him in that, that category, can you? No, no, you can't even because you, you, can't get, put him in there. <laughs> you get flash you get flashbacks, it's just um totally oh, offside, mate. <laughs> but talking about Rangers, Rangers also really impressive victory versus the Lincoln Red um, emphatic, a five 0 victory. Um I could all, I had it on in the background myself, Jack, you were working, but five 0 mate, gotta be happy with that, eh? Oh, very happy. I, I mean, I've watched uh, the post-match interviews and stuff like that. I've seen, uh, I've seen the stats. Even five uh, 0 victory, and Gerard still saying no happy with how we performed. They said we didn't, we never got our first gear, which has been a kind of theme for the whole season so far. We've never actually got out of that part where we look like we're playing like our best we could play. So when I seen the score, I was like, somebody was doing a thumping, and it was, oh, they've been thumped, but in the same breath. But there was never going to be one winner that game. I mean, I know they beat Celtic a few years ago, but how much a flip was that? Never mind beating us when we're playing really good football at the moment. Aye, well they beat Celtic and then in the second leg Celtic absolutely battered them. I have heard though that um, Rangers have broke a record tonight. The first Scottish team to beat Lincoln Redimps in Gibraltar. So that's oh, really? <laughs> Have you heard the we start about Morelos? He's now one goal behind Alan McCoist in European goals. Aye mate, well Stephen Gerrard spoke about that. Um, Aye. And I love, I love what Stephen Gerrard said. He basically just said, listen, Alan McCoy, he can't really put them in the same breath at the moment because Alan McCoy's done it and he won trophies. 
consistently yeah. at Rangers. Alfredo Morelos has not done that yet. So, and even if you compare, yeah. see, oh, Morelos undoubtedly for me would have scored goals in the Champions League. I don't, he wouldn't have got anywhere near as what he got, obviously, in mm-hmm. the Europa League and the qualifiers and all that. But for me, undoubtedly, he can uh, and will score goals in the Champions League. However, a lot of his goals have been in the qualifiers and the group stages and, and stuff like that. And, and that's not the same. It's just not. No, definitely not. That's what I was I have going to say. That was the same interview with Gerard. He pretty much had the nail, had the nail on the top, didn't he? With that kind of evaluation saying, look, it's a great start for the boy, but... Let's no, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It's good, but it's good for him if if Manelos sees that because Manelos is going to look at that and go, right, okay, I need, to, I need, to, I, need to, I need to keep pushing, and there's no point in sitting down and relaxing if I'm doing this well. So you need, to, it was always, it was always the next, the next hurdle. Mm-hmm. He looks a happy boy. I know, I love it. I like kind of get how happy his him being happy makes me. <laughs> but I think, mate, absolutely, because I, I think a lot of people questioned his professionalism mm-hmm. and. For me, it's never really been about his professionalism. I you might have been a wee bit pissed off at not getting a move a few weeks ago, but I've never questioned like him going into training and, and getting it his all sort of thing. I know he was left out of the squad, but I think that that was due to um, maybe just having a wee bit too much carry on. Do you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. he was. I don't think he was getting in and being a like being a dick basically yeah, to, to other to other players and stuff like that. He probably down tools a wee bit to a certain extent the manager before he completely went after the rails was like listen and that's totally awesome man management from the manager because if you look at him now he's all smiles he's been in training I think he only had one day off during the international break he's came back looking sharp scoring goals and you can see his cheekbones again so that's great it's a good thing as well because look at it he's a young boy getting off with probably double the wage we are getting him the new he's obviously going to have his head turned he's obviously going to be thinking his family because as You've seen a million times or a charity work he does. He'll be thinking about all the stuff he can do with that. Of course, your head's going to get turned. Maybe, maybe he did react in a way that isn't he, like some Rangers fans on the happy way, which is fair enough. But you can't argue with how he's bounced back. Absolutely. And guys, I put out a video yesterday when you're seeing this video, and it was pretty much doing a wee challenge where I walked from Hamden Stadium to the Hamilton Stadium. It was all to raise awareness for a charity match. Um, that is happening on Saturday, 3 p.m. at the Hamilton Aki Stadium. It's for a boy named Daniel. It's a do it for Daniel charity match. And yeah, I've got a wee statement here from his mate that I can read out to you guys that will give you a, a clearer picture if you've not seen the video um, as to why this charity match is taking place. So Daniel was diagnosed with a rare form of brain tumour at the age of 16. Um, the prognosis for DMG, DIPG is absolutely devastating. And every nine days in the UK, another family receives the same horrible, horrible news. Brainstem cancer is one of the deadliest types of cancers that there is. And there is little to no funding and research that is available due to the low funding. So on Saturday, um, Daniel's mates are going to be taking part in a charity match where you can actually buy the match for five quid. It's going to be on Aki's TV, which is class for Hamilton, putting it on there. And all money will go towards finding a cure. But um, yeah, I would, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it, Troops, if you were able to, to support it in any way that you can. But Jack, that's brilliant stuff there, listening to some of the stuff that these young guys are doing for their, their mate Daniel here, in it? And, and doing Aye, something proactive. Like, right? so you can only, you can't hear really imagine what it must be like getting put in that sort of position like uh, mm-hmm. so the fact that he's he'll, he'll see the reaction obviously and it'll be tough to bits for that I know hoping to raise as much money for po- as possible mate they've raised 95 grand so far <sighs> 95 grand looking to exactly look, I think they're looking to like, like raise about 250 grand but 95 mm-hmm. grand for a start is absolutely That's astonishing, amazing. man. And uh, Daniel will be in my prayers for sure. But moving That's on right. to the football again, Celtic. So Celtic are now only three points behind Rangers with that game yeah. in hand. They're one goal behind at the weekend there. They won 5-0. Big guy Shane Duffy gets a goal. And then on Wednesday night, he gets another goal. What are you, what are you saying about Celtic, mate? They've obviously went 3 5 two. They're, yes. they're starting to play a bit better. Duffy seems to have made a big difference. Is it a good enough, though? Uh, I mean, what I've watched, I think it was Ireland v Finland with Kamara playing. I watched a bit of that. I seen a wee bit of him. I seen a wee bit of his debut, and I seen a wee bit of him against Sweden. 
there's one thing I'll say as a Rangers fan, I am scared of them getting a corner against us. That guy will not that guy does not does not get let anybody get to bury him. I'm pretty sure it was Big Julian for the St. Mirren goal and he's like he goes up for the header and he's just like, ah, nope, I'm getting this and he goes through every single one of them and gets the head. So, I think that that's the difference between him and Julian. Julian was on the deck looking for a penalty and he was putting it in the back of the net. So he looks an absolute force. Um, for set pieces. We're got, definitely going to need to watch that in the old firm. But then you look at the same breath. I mean, obviously Ross County, they absolutely annihilated them. But then you look at St Mirren. I'm pretty sure I was, I was coming home for work and I checked my phone it was 1-0 St Mirren. I mean... Obviously, the defence was a, was a thing that was they were struggling with, and they brought him in to fix that. But you kind of concede in the first five minutes against St Mirren if your defence is where it should, where it wants to be, that kind of happening. Uh, it was a poor goal to concede as well. The right. defence was was raging. I think it was Christie that let Lee Irwin go, and I was absolutely gutted. Obviously, that Celtic get the equaliser and went on to win the game because I just had the perfect meme. Mate, <laughs> Lee Elwin, right, is the guy, if you don't know, that got a left hook off of Bill El Mosney, right? <laughs> so the meme that I was going to do, I was going to put the Celtic badge on Lee Elwin getting a left crack <laughs> and then put Lee Elwin's face on Bill El Mosney. <laughs> so it'll be Lee, Lee Elwin not on out of his cell, but with a Celtic badge on it, mate. That would have been absolutely glorious. Be I'm, raging, I'm raging that I couldn't do it. To be fair, I'm pretty sure I'd text my mate as soon as the goal went in, we were like laughing faces, and then right after it, I was like, I mean, it's going to end up like 4 1, but it's still funny. <laughs> mate, you just knew it. You just knew that Celtic was still still going to win the game. A massive talking point has been the comments uh, made by Gary Breen. I'm not going to lie, Crips, right? I, I don't know this guy. Apparently, he's like a Republic Island dude. And he's basically said about Shane Duffy, right? He said, and it's a brilliant move for Celtic, but the quality of player he's playing against now will be a big concern for Ireland. He is not going to be up against the quality centre-forwards. Um, there is no centre-forward in Scotland who would play in a Premier League team. None. Kemar Roof, burying goals for Leeds. Right? He'd have played in the Premier League easily. Alfredo Morelos, easily could play in the Premier League. Jermaine Defoe, I mean, come on, he's seventh all-time goal scorer in the <laughs> Premier League. I know they're only Rangers, right? Um, but that is just ridiculous. It's just it's another example of somebody that does not know the game up here in Scotland, just making stupid comments. He's Definitely. basically he's basically insinuating, right, that Duffy's yeah. took a backward step in his career by going to Celtic. And for me, it couldn't be further away from the truth. Even the Ireland manager Jack came out and kind of blasted it and said, no, we're happy where I'm going there, do you know what I mean? Oh, I it's know. just, it's stupid, man, honestly. It's one of the ones that we're not, we're not deluded, but in the same breath, people always, always, always underestimate the talent up here. I mean, look at all the players that we've produced in Scotland. There's like Van Dyke, Robertson, just to name a couple. It's one of the ones where we, I think to get, it's going to get to the point where we need to stop biting, because I mean, it gets to the point where I feel like they're only trying to wind us up. Because it can we can't be producing these players. We can't be competing in Europe all these years. We beat Rangers beating Porto, Celtic beating Lazio, and you're still claiming that none of this, none of these players could make it in the Prem. And then obviously the Prem's got more talent, more money, more everything. But Morelos, like you said, came out roof. I just name a couple again, easily making making a Prem team. It's embarrassing, and you're right. Maybe we're doing it to stop biting, but it's so annoying. See, when these <laughs> people, they just don't know Scottish football, right? And it's just sheer. I don't even know. Ignorance, mate, that's the word, bang on. It's just ignorance because they don't know the game, right? If you look at the track record, the players that have came from Scotland in the last 10, 15 years, when the league's not even been at its peak, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, one of the uh, players that came is now the best defender in world football, the other one probably the best fullback in world football, and then there's another one that just came a couple of seasons ago for Selic. Do you know what I mean? It was decent. Mm -hmm. God's sake, Stephen Naismith wasn't even one of the best players in the league or whatever, but when he went down to Everton, he caused it. Do you know what I mean? Scored even, goals. Even, and... even, even when he was recently missing down Bailey, playing for Leon week in, week out. Exactly. Absolutely tore Pep Guardiola's Man City, a new arsehole as well. <laughs> <laughs> and he done it at Celtic, I know. Do you know what I mean? I so it's, it's just totally laughable, mate. It's totally laughable. There's just too many of these people. and, I and it's, well, it's, it's good. It's, it's dumb because it's like... Well, we'll gain these people the time of day by listening to what they've got to say, but it, it gets to the point where when do we, what else do we need today to prove that we've got the talent? I know, exactly. Maybe we could we can never prove that we've got the talent. Do you know what I mean? 
We wouldn't even win the Champions League, Celtic wouldn't even win the Europa League in the same year to prove that we're both contenders for a good team. Aye. Do you know, it's funny, I cut, I cut a year ago there, or a year ago or so, obviously John McGinn's at Aston Villa. Aye. i seen this dude on Twitter. One of the reasons I'm not on Twitter anymore, man, because I just feel like it's, I don't know, it's a bit toxic. It doesn't teach you enough about football. It doesn't talk about football. It will just tell you what everybody's raging about. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so there was this dude, mate, and he was on, he was an Aston Villa fan because he had it in his bio and all that, and he had John McGinn as his profile picture, and he was on saying that the Scottish League has no talent. Honestly, I was, <laughs> and that's, that's what you're up against. You're just up exactly, against, man. surely he's fishing there, eh? It must be. There's no, there's no way you can, you can, I mean, having a football player your profile picture is embarrassing enough, but the fact that you're going to go on line and claim that there's, the, the person you'll display picture isn't good enough. <laughs> Oh my god. It's like know. having right. a broken picture of motor. Oh, don't. <laughs> do not. Don't do it to me. <laughs> hey, do you know what I want to ask you, actually? What was yeah. your uh, email for back in the day? Did you have a. Did you oh, have no. a, like, a better? Uh, so, when I asked my. When I swapped emails to my current one, which I won't give it, <laughs> was when I was applying for jobs. And my mum said, you can't use that because it was not even that bad. Was, I think it was Jack RSE. 1997 or something like that. <laughs> they were like, Jack, you can't put RSE on a fucking <laughs> on a job application. <laughs> Mate, mine's was um, Davey B number one or something like that. <laughs> see, see the thing is, see, see my work, I need to take details off customers like when I'm staring and stuff and see some of the ones you hear, man, it'll be like Big Dave 1888 at <laughs> pops11.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's yeah, just... You obviously need to be professional. She can't say anything. And then just, and then just see what they say. And I just put so much confidence about it. I'm like, mate, fair play. You, you stick yeah. to your guns, big man. <laughs> Aye, on you go, mate. On you go. Right, Rangers also at the weekend. one 4 now. Happy with that, Jack? Uh, very happy. I thought Dundee United were going to be a tough game. We've seen how they played against Celtic. And, uh, and obviously, we know about the hatred to the... The clubs share for each other, so I thought they were going to be a. Obviously, what we're going to touch on later is the like aggressiveness and the so what I'm not physicality of the fixture, mm-hmm. which I knew was what was going to happen, but no, to quite to the degree that it happened. But uh, very happy with the four goals, obviously, and uh, three points, clean sheet. The biggest thing big... for me, mate, was um, the fact that although we had the injuries, the guys that came on were absolutely mm-hmm. superb. So Barker went down with an injury, uh, Ryan Jack went down for an, with an injury, as you just said there, Arfield came on, Glenn Kamara came on, Arfield was incredible mate, was he amazing. was absolutely class, he got his goal, even uh, Big Bassey, he came on, Morelos right. came on and was frightening, um, it was it was brilliant and it just goes to show how far Rangers have came with the squad depth, can they keep that up for a full season, it's yet to be seen, but so far it's looking good because the guys that are coming in, are doing a job, they're sticking to their guns, Rangers change shape and all that sort of stuff during the game as well. And it just worked. It, it was just totally brilliant. Fair Rangers, feel, for me, like the best performance. How come? Because like uh, watching the game, my brother, and we Alfie's just like, done a wee chance or something, and he's walking back for the, the touch when he's just cheesered him at Dylan. Mate, I love seeing him happy. And then I go my phone to say, he's on the, he's on the ground with a hole in his leg. <laughs> Let's talk about that then. The hole in yeah. his leg. Oh God, man! So I don't. So I've got a perfect example, right? So I seen on. I don't know who it was. It was on a on a radio or on something. Or it might have been like the BT ref or something. Like that, came out and said that it's not a red card. He's it's the players what? followed through, and he's the players followed through, and he said no intentions. So let me ask this question: See when Chung Ming Son shoulder tackled somebody, and the guy fell and snapped his leg. Why was Son sent off? Like, I've near. Uh, what I put to, put two and two together? Son. Has went in for the ball fairly. He's actually done a fair tackle, if you ask me. The way the guy's landed, snaps his leg, gets sent after it. This guy puts his boot in his leg and there's a hole in his leg and we don't even get a free kick. There's a literal hole in his leg, mate. That's that's <laughs> the thing, right? If you, if you look at letter, letter of the law, you can get a red card by using excessive force or endangering an opponent. Surely that tackle falls under the endangering of an opponent when the guy's got a hole in his leg. I mean, I think only Edwards will know if he's intentionally done that. If you look at the way that he's kicked the ball, the ball's coming slowly at him, right? He's absolutely quaver-toed it along the ground. And just for some reason, his, his legs went up also and went right into Alfredo Morelos. His face 
went white as a ghost. Everybody yeah. talks about reactions of players and how, how Rangers players never reacted and all that, but look at his face. His face is like Casper. Honestly, right. he's, <laughs> he's white, mate, because there's a hole in Alfredo Morelos' leg. It's mental. Look at the... Uh, I'm pretty sure you you remember the challenge Ryan Jack done in the Aberdeen game. I think mm-hmm. it was one of, one of the first times he played against Aberdeen for us. And he's it's a 50 50 went for the ball, and he's, he's fixed on air the ball and in, in his leg. And gets a sent after it, we appealed it, and nothing happened. So, how come that's a red card where we appeal is getting declined for a challenge when a player can then play on? But Manelos is getting stripped of that. We are actual gash in his leg, and then he gives a free kick. I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how. I like obviously. Certain times I will be biased Rangers wise, but I don't know how you can be in this situation thinking that's not red card. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know. Well, I think some people say that he's no meant it, but as we just went through there, if you look at the, the letter of the law, endangering an opponent, the guy's got a hole in his leg. Surely <laughs> it should be a red card. It goes to oh. um, the panel, mate, and then they say, that it's not a red card as well. Oh, so he's not getting punished. But this is this is the same people that decided that the uh, power challenge on Ryan Jack's skull was not a red <laughs> card. So I, I'm not too sure how, how we can take them serious, to be quite honest. But I'm not going to sit here, not going to sit here and moan about it because Rangers still won. Alfredo Morelos is fine, and I think he's bigger. Exactly, scored two tonight. Bigger issues to talk about there for me, James Tavernier was absolutely extraordinary, mate. Unbelievable. Best performance of the season. 250th game. A goal. This guy doesn't get talked about enough for me. I feel, honest to God, see, see, see in terms of players like in this current squad like don't get enough praise for what they do. I'm going to go with Goldson. I'm going to go with Tav. I'm going to go with Arfield. Because see, even though Arfield didn't have a great end to last season, he plays a really important part in that midfield when he's when he's in it. So it's, it's, it's a lot of off the ball stuff, and all. it's not always the best pass he's played or the best shot he's had. There's a lot of things going through him that nobody really talks about, especially when Aribo's injured because we miss him. And Arfield felt that role perfectly. Absolutely, mate. And for me, in the latter stages of last season, Arfield was the best player consistency wise. So I very very important player. But Tav, mate, and also I agree with you with Goldson being underrated. But Tav. Just it gets too much criticism for me. Definitely. I mean, see if you look at the SPFL team of the week there, there wasn't mm-hmm. a Rangers player in it. Tavenier wasn't in it, mate. They was just Davis broke Davis was in it. I mean at the back, sorry. All right. Um so this is literally a record breaking defence and none none uh-huh. were in it, pardon me. <laughs> That's mental. Couldn't, that took, you couldn't eat it, man. That's mental. But we'll move on. Move on for the old form a wee bit. Hibs continue good form. Nisbet's back. Managed to manage to score. They won three 0 Ross McCrory scored another goal as well at the weekend. Aberdeen get another victory. Only loss this season has been to Rangers, mate. And both of them are looking brilliant. But my question to you is, who's finishing third? <laughs> so, if you ask me, I'm pretty sure I said in one of the first episodes of this, I said Hibs were finishing third, and I was dead certain on that, hundred percent. I'm still going to say Hibs the new, but it's it's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. I feel like Hibs have just got that wee bit extra than Aberdeen. I feel, but in that same breath, I feel that Aberdeen could keep this up longer. If that makes sense, I don't know really know how. So I'm contradicting myself a lot here because I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to I'm going to guess Hibs the new. I'm going to stick with Hibs the new in third place. Right. Well, I think I think if you want to describe me. You would say I talk probably a lot of Jehovah's. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I said Hibs as well, mate. But I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to jump the gun already. I'm going to Aberdeen because I just think Aberdeen, although Hibs have been winning some ugly games so far this season, I think Aberdeen have got what it takes to beat every single team out with the old firm because they just seem to go in runs like this every season. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so far, it's looking class. Ross McCrory is starting to cement himself. Is a top midfielder there. He's scoring goals. He's breaking stuff up. And also, Aberdeen beat Hibs, didn't they? Mm-hmm. And they bossed him. They bossed him in that game. So, for me, I think Aberdeen might take it. But, as, again, it's like a long season. So, we just need to wait and right. see. That's what I'm thinking. Don't get me wrong. Like, as much as I'm going to say to just saying Hibs third the new, 
I'm literally just saying that because I said that at the beginning. <laughs> it, really, it really well could be Aberdeen. I mean, this game at the weekend is going to be very, very, very important for Hibs and Rangers playing each other, obviously, at Easter Road. Very interesting fixture. It could go either way. We'll get to that prediction in a wee while. But uh, we I, it's going to be interesting to see how we, how, not just how we play against us, but how Hibs play against us. Because I feel like if, if Hibs are one of the teams that are going to, if they go for it, they, can be, they could beat us. Let's wet the palate a wee bit then. Oh, lovely. I'll get mine then. Sponsor break. What? <laughs> oh, it's a wee shout out for CJ there. No, so what, what I was going on to you, mate, was why don't you tell us the scores then for the predictions? That's what oh, we'll wet in the palate. Let, we're on the Dana sponsor then. break, but <laughs> since you've said it now, why don't you all go and subscribe to CJ Robo 992 <laughs> as well? Because he, he does some class videos, so on you go. <laughs> but anyway, what, so was it, gonna... what was the scores? Oh, to last week. Here last we week, mate. Yeah, let's go so, for we, we had the, the games of last week were St. Mirren v. Hibs, Aberdeen v. Kelly, Ross County Celtic, Livingston Hamilton, Motherwell St. Johnson, and Rangers Dundee United. So, in the first game, St. Mirren Hibs, I predicted 3 1 Hibs. You predicted a 0 0 draw, and it finished 3 0 Hibs. Wow. wow. Second Good game, for you. Aberdeen v. Kelly, I said 2 1 Aberdeen. You said 2 1 Aberdeen. It finished 1 0 Aberdeen. Fair enough. Third game, Ross County v Celtic. I said 4-0 Celtic. You said 3-1 Celtic. It's actually 5-0 Celtic. Fair enough. <laughs> Livingston v Hamilton. We both said 2-0 and it finished 2-1 the other way. So Hamilton ended up winning that one. Quite very surprisingly, in my opinion. Uh, Motherwell v St. Johnson. We both had draws. It ended up 1-0 Motherwell. And then Rangers dominated. I said 3-1. You said 2-0. It finished 4-0. Ooh. So the way the, the way the points went that week, I got 12. You got 9. Which leaves us with, with me on 33, you're on 39, six points in it. Wow, so you're starting to clock back? Climbing back slowly but surely. A wee bit like Celtic, hopefully I can just absolutely stamp Don't you to the ground. Don't ever <laughs> Celtic again, David. <laughs> I've done it. The deed has been done. I was just about to go to... If I make episode six, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Send your applications to sharpdivbusiness at gmail.com. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding on Jack. You're, you're too much of a valued boy on here. Did anyway, you, you see who sort of comment I said about me? Oh, what did they say? Go for it. Oh, no. Jack looks like Jack Grealish. <laughs> Mate, that's all right, by the way. <laughs> Mate, I commented back. I was like, I'll take that. <laughs> Mate, that's what I'm He's not a bad looking like boy, man. <laughs> he is. He is indeed. Take I'll take Mate, that. Mate, take that all day. Comment section okay. who do I look like? If you say Chris Boyd, I'll punch everyone you hate him. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh right. Um, I was going to go into the next topic that we have written down here, but as you said, Hamilton, wow, mate. Like, they're, as, we don't expect them to pick up victories and stuff like that, but at the moment, Big Chipper's just doing a, doing a good job there. He's, he's doing well. They're getting results. See, Hamilton, for me, with this whole prediction thing, so it's ironic because I'll probably say Rangers are going to win every game this season because I'm not ever going to predict we're going to get beat just because in my head we can, we can, we can win every game so why not predict it? Hamlet's one of the teams where I feel like I'm predicting that the opposite. I feel like I'm always going, no, they'll get beat, they'll get beat, they'll get beat. Just instinctly thinking that. But yeah. Lim- Livingston at home as well, what a, what a, a cracking result. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. I think Hamilton are a better team than Livingston this year. There you go. Oh, that's a, that's a big, that's a big statement. That is a big <laughs> statement for me. Big statement. Go on the Aki's. Dougie only, Emery's only, a coach. Do you know what I mean? He's like only, only team to, to make us drop points so far this season. Uh, true. I know, but we were crap that day. We should have won. And another <laughs> day, on another day, it would have been a nine 0 I'm telling before, you. It'll be four 0 at Ibrox. Oh, it'll be six 0 at Ibrox, man. Six, Jesus okay. Christ. Well, if you, uh, well, that's on that's on the call. So you, uh, when the game comes, you'll need to predict six 0 Oh, no. <laughs> hey, OK, we'll that's fine. Ten, we'll have about 10 people that are injured. <laughs> uh, we'll still, we'll still win 6-0, mate. We'll still win 6-0. Okay. Okay. But uh, the next topic we're going to speak about, a player that can make the jump in the Scottish League to the old firm. A guy who's been spoken about a hell of a lot. There was rumours about um, going to Celtic a couple of weeks ago. I said in my recent uh, video, there should be a, a new segment in the Bible. A Ferguson shall never put a Celtic top on. It just shouldn't happen. Lewis Ferguson, mate, do you think he's good enough to play for, let's just say Rangers, because we can't say Celtic, but old uh, firm, is, is he good enough yet? It's a, it's a hard gen. I feel like if, if we play the way 
if we play to his best capabilities, I think he could play for Rangers. If we play the way we play, and we have the two holding with Aribo in front, I don't know where he fits in there. Like, I don't see him getting a place there, Jack, and I don't. And Davis on his day, I don't see him get because Davis has got that kind of technical. He's not got the physical aspects, but the technical. Davis aspect. is still the man. I don't. I don't see you putting two because Ryan Jack and uh, Ferguson are, are quite similar in, in terms of a physical, and they they get down and dirty with the football. But I don't see him putting two of the identical players where we create and play in front of him. I think he would like to break that up. So, ah, uh, you know, I think I think ability wise, it could fit in somewhere. Realistically, I don't see how. I think another couple of seasons at Aberdeen, mate, and we'll see the development um, at Aberdeen. Could go on and and could could do wonders for him. For me at the moment, technically he's not there, but he's got a lot of desire. Um, good tackler, big boy, strong, got an eye for goal and stuff like that. So maybe in a couple of years, but at the moment I'm just looking at him. Right, he's a year younger than Ross McCrory. I'm looking at him and I, I'm struggling to see how he is better mm-hmm. than Ross McCrory. Yeah, and Rangers have let him go. So for me at the moment, I would say it's a no. It's just what's well, it's, uh, it's the same thing as well. Like you look at people like Jake Hasty and stuff that were signed to like, have showed promise and other other teams. I, I feel like Lewis Ferguson's another one of them. It screams to me if we sign him, he'll be going on loan somewhere. Mm-hmm. But then Celtic have been doing it well. See when they've been signing guys like Christie, they loaned him out to Aberdeen for two years. Do you know exactly. how like Rangers Rangers are maybe a wee bit too quick to just get rid of Ross McCrory, like Aye, loan him, loan him out for a couple couple of years and see what he can do, man, and then. And then do something. I don't no, know. Don't, I don't know don't if COVID. Don't the country, man. <laughs> I know. I don't. So can go watch. <laughs> aye, but I, I don't know if COVID's had something to do with a lot of aye. these players. Because I feel like I feel like it's had a bigger effect. Widespread football than people realised. I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. Like next topic, Premier League. We're going to do a wee bit of talking about um, the English Prem. Seen a lot of people making prediction videos and stuff like that. So thought we'd jump on the bandwagon here a wee bit, Jack. And, Give our opinions. Fashion. I'll kick us off, right? Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put one out here. But we're, we're, we're our top seven, right? I've not got Leicester in my top seven. No, they are. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> I like that. Right, I'll, I'll start off you with start my. With I'll start off with seven, mate. Cool, mate. Right? So in seventh place, I'm gonna go for Spurs. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been watching this Spurs documentary and I would absolutely That's love for them. It, oh, unbelievable, <laughs> mate. Jose Mourinho is a hero. Like, what See, a guy. About Jose, uh, Jose Mourinho, I keep saying, he didn't like Jose, didn't he, Jose? He doesn't. <laughs> Aye. Uh, I, I never really liked him before this. I didn't really like his, see the whole cocky stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't go well. It's like, it's, he's never liked that, Sam. It's just not my thing. And uh, after this, I love him. He's, he just seems like such a nice guy. It just goes to show you, though, didn't it? Like you don't, you, you kind of judge a book it's by its cover. cover. You don't know what's going on, and see documentaries like this. For me, this has been the best sporting documentary so uh, far. Obviously, we've had Man City, we've had Sunderland, um, we've had Leeds. For me, this is the best so far. Because I'd say so. oh, mate, unbelievable! The access has been just unparalleled, and then how good just the Rangers are, be, man. That's what I've been thinking. Be Even. So good, just that, just a Scottish football one. I'll take honestly, like, but obviously I'd like it to happen for my club. But oh my god, I, I, it's just it's so good. good. I can't get enough. I've watched every single episode, nine episodes. Jose Mourinho is just my hero. I've seen, I've seen <laughs> it for six. I've seen it for six years because I work and stuff. I'm not anybody. Because see if I watch one, I'm watching uh, all three. No matter when I start it, so <laughs> I need to be careful. I don't end up at three in the morning when I've got a shift the next morning. <laughs> Bad days, but I've been classed. But anyways, I would love for them to get top four and even win the league. Fuck it, the <laughs> way it's gone. But I, I think seventh. I just, right. I don't know. I think seven. I've got seventh. Right, here you go. I've got Wolves. It's a good shout. I, I, I from see so for people watching at home, I, I've I had to write this thing quite quick. So I've just, I went with just like a gut feeling. I had my first six done, and I was like, who can I realistically see pushing for that? And Wolves have proved it this season as well, and they're doing really well in Europe, so aye, Wolves. Nice. Right, I've got Arsenal in sixth. Snap. Have you, aye? Decent. Aye. <laughs> Obviously, they won the FA Cup, but I'm just looking at the, the squad depth, and I don't think it's there still. 
I don't think defensively they're still there. Obviously, they've signed the big boy Gabriel, but so mm-hmm. far, just for just for what I've saw and stuff like, that, although he looks a player, just as a squad as a whole, I just still think sit. So. I think I think they've got a. I think they're real tight at the helm. Of, they're on they're on the up. I feel like they're gonna yes. they will they'll be a top four team in a few years maybe. I just don't think they've got it. No cut out for it yet. I don't think uh, they're showing that obviously players like Tierney. He's he's playing class. Who else? Is a Bamingham's obviously playing amazingly. So he's just signed a new three year contract. So he's there for a bit. So I I feel like they're I feel like they're definitely on the up. I feel like a lot of Arsenal fans are getting frustrated when. Uh, Arsene Wenger wasn't really replaced well and I feel like they've got a really good guy in Arteta. It's a process though, isn't it? I mean, look at Jürgen Klopp. Ah, it took, him, it took him five seasons to win a Premier League. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I've got them in there. Fifth place, Jack, do you want to go first? Yeah, I've got Tottenham. You've got Spurs? I mean, I'll, this was heavily influenced by a certain someone who's meant to be coming to Spurs very, very soon. Who's meant oh, to I got a few. Who's arriving in London tomorrow? Apparently, to discuss the to discuss the move. What a what a signing that would be. See, the thing for me with Bale is he. I don't think he would have been at his best at any other Prem team. I think the fact he's gone back to Spurs will bring it out him, and I think he'll I think he'll be amazing for Spurs again. Right. Okay. You've sold me, mate. I'm going. I'm going heart over head. I'm putting Spurs in fifth and all. Gareth Bale. <laughs> we're, move, we're moving. We're moving Arsenal up one. And we're putting my fifth place into sixth, Everton. All right, okay. James Rodriguez is playing for Everton. Are you taking the piss? It, it, it doesn't make to add up for me. It doesn't make sense. They're also in the running for Thiago Alcantara. See, the Did thing you know for that? me is, I didn't know that, actually. But see, the thing for it, for me, Everton's always just seems like that team. Like They always sign a pure big player now and again. Like, look, they had Rooney, they had Eto, they've got Rodriguez. And they never really have a passion for it. They never, they never ever get, they never cut it for me. So uh, they're not getting mad up. Do I know what the difference is though? What's that? Ancelotti, mate. True. He uh, is, is a, a big difference. elite. Ancelotti is elite. Look at the clubs that he's managed. He was an absolutely unbelievable player. Ancelotti, I think, is going to get a tune out of him. I think Ancelotti's the reason guys like Hamas or Rodriguez yeah, are going to Everton or why Thiago Alcantara is potentially considering going there. If they could get Thiago, mate, who was the best player in the bloody Champions League final, they could they could That's make a push for the top four. They could make a push. I still think you'll go to Liverpool, mind you, but I, I, Everton are in running. When you said that there, I was in my head, I was like, I'm pretty sure he's a Liverpool. But, uh, I if they go to him, if they send him to Liverpool, that's a... Thiago, Thiago's out of contract at the end of the year. Liverpool only want to pay 20 million euros. Bayern Munich wanted 30 million. So then Everton have went in and they've been sniffing about it and now it looks like Liverpool are going to get them for 20 mil with like 5 mil add-ons. But yeah, okay. you just never know. You just never know. Definitely. Everton could just go and go, there you go, if there's 30 million euros, there you go. So you just never know. That's pennies, up. That's pennies in the Premier League, man. Aye. 30 million euros for him, man. That's amazing. I know. Oh. Unbelievable. So in number four, Got it the first team in the top four. I'm going with Manchester United. <laughs> well, I, I just think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is do, doing all right at the moment. He's brought mm-hmm. in Bruno Fernandes, who is on fire. Um, Pogba, no being the top man, starting to play well. Martial had his best season last year. Rashford, you've got Greenwood. I think a year or two, a cut of signings, a centre half and specific, like specifically, and maybe a couple of fullbacks and another centre mid or whatever. They could win the league, but at the moment, I think they're good enough for top four, but just not good enough to make that push yet for me. Hundred percent agree. I think I think they're they're similar to Arsenal where they're they're on the up. Obviously, had a wee, they had a wee lip couple of seasons, but I feel like they are on the up and they will be pushing for it in the next couple of years. And they are, top four is obviously one of the lucrative things in the Premier League, and I think they'll get it this year. Right, number three, who are you going, Jack? Uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. I, I think that Chelsea team is looking fierce, like. But in the same breath, are they going to play well together? I mean, you, you could put you can put eleven you can put eleven world class players in a team together, but doesn't they going to play well together? Doesn't sure. they going to gel the right way? But uh, the quality of that team has, see when you look at it on paper, it's frightening. But it's if they can play together. No, that's true. Uh, I have went Liverpool. Oh really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, maybe slightly controversial, but. 
I don't even know why. I'm just going Liverpool. Do you mean much of the FA predictions? Is that what he said, aye? I'm pretty sure he put Liverpool at third now. Mate, I think it's hard. It's hard to retain a Premier League back to back for sure. He also but put Man City, Man City first and Man U second. Did he? Like, do you want me just to blow that right out of the water then? Go on. I've got Man City in second and Chelsea winning the league. Man. <laughs> That's a big statement. That is a big, big statement. Big Frankie Ball and I, first manager of Prem. Two weeks I'll probably get back in my word. <laughs> uh, I've got Man City first, Liverpool second. I think Pep right. is the I think Pep is the kind of guy that will be able to evaluate that last season there, and he'll know how to fix that. Whereas I, I've no, I don't, I can't really judge Klopp because he's never actually won a prem before. But I feel like it sounds really daft because it's, they're obviously a professional team and they're obviously not going to let it get to their heads. But I feel like it's almost like a big exhale for Liverpool now. That 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 gap of not winning the league gets it done now, and they're like, right, okay, similar to see if Celtic win ten in a row. I think I. I think we'll have a lot stronger season next year because we'll still be pushing. Whereas mm-hmm. Celtic will be like, right, okay, we've done it, and it's yeah. going to, and that that might play a big part in the heads. We don't know, obviously. Liverpool have obviously got the quality to win it, but for me, Man City will edge it. I really hope Man City don't because um, I hate them. <laughs> it's a franchise and it's not a club. It's weird because I love Kevin De Bruyne, but that's about it. I like a lot of Man City, but I just don't, I don't like the fact that they're like the way PSG are, but they're a brand, they're not a team for me. Mm. I like a lot of their players. The same as PSG, I like a lot of PSG players. I like a lot of Man City players and stuff like that. I just don't like what they're all about. I don't like the cut of their jib. Definitely, I agree with you. Okay, right. Yeah. Should we get into some predictions? Prediction on the onions. Sorry. Jesus Christ, is this I've just a... Too, for I've fuck's sake! Many. I've done too many, mate, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're taking a piss? <laughs> I bet I'll be getting a wee bung off CJ by the way. A bung? A bung off CJ? A bung, B U N G. You'll think Glasgow, you know what I'm. B U M? B U N G. A silent you M? Mon- if you want monetizement, you better just pass it. But- <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't even believe you just said you want a bung off CJ, man. Jesus I'm, Christ. You're both, well, we're both thinking it. That was me. Ah, I, I, okay then. It was me yeah, hanging it. It was me hanging it. People watching at home. Yeah, but I didn't know what a bung is. I didn't know what a bung is. Thank God, by the way. Of course, I, I know what a bung is, very, mate. I'd look very bad if that was. If you didn't know what that meant. That'd be dreadful. Right, cool. So first game, Celtic v Levy. Three 0 Celtic. Levy, for me this season, not looking great. Not looking great. Looking like relegation fodder potentially. Uh, Celtic, I think I'll do them. 3 0. Comfortable. Yeah, I've went 3 1. I think it will be comfortable. Celtic have just got this wee thing about them where they will win the game and they will get the three points, but they're just looking a bit shaky at the back still, even though Duffy's there. And Duffy might end up getting another goal when he's surprised in the slightest. But Livingston have got that in them, a wee, a wee goal somewhere or another. So I've went 3 1. Nice. Second game yeah. is Dundee United v St. Mirren. I've went 2 1 Dundee United. No, no, no! A massive reason why. I just, it's just one of the ones where you're writing it down, you get a wee feeling, you're writing a number down, and I wrote two one down United. <laughs> I could go any, I could go either way. I think Shanklin's going to be back for this game. For that reason, I am also edging Dundee United to win two one. I'm going to agree with oh, you there, Jack. Smashing. Yes, I think Shanklin could be the difference in this one, and also he's going to be um, massive for them this year. Correct, I believe so. Although he missed a sitter versus Rangers. But yeah, by not played a lot of football. He he must have been looking at in his season going, if I want to end up here, I can't just go against him. It was that bad a shot. It looked like he meant it. <laughs> and it was also that bad a shot that he'll never fucking end up there. So <laughs> uh, third game is come on with the Hamilton. What have you got? Do you know what? I've got two 0 Kelly, but I'm changing it to two one Hamilton. Because as we said earlier, oh. we say we just can consistently like say Hamilton are going to get beat. So, fuck it. I'm going Hamilton to win. 2-1. I, mean, I am I think I'm, I'm consistent. I think 3-0 come on. <laughs> at, at Rugby Park, uh, obviously Hamilton are accustomed to that plastic pitch, but I just feel like come on. Look. If Chris Buck plays to his best ability, go Hamilton. I mean, Benjamin Button is decent, isn't he? <laughs> the 
You said it now, mate. You said it now. <laughs> Two one Hamilton. It's wrote, right. do not, it's, wrote, it's wrote in the pad. <laughs> we David Temps. We David Temps to score. Okay then. Okay. Fourth game, St Johnson vs Ross County at uh, uh, St Johnson at home. I went for one each. Jesus, Jack. Oh my! If I never changed the Kelly result there, then we'd have had three back to back to back to back to back like Drake. You got, you got one all each cap, all like a cap a budge. Uh, I have went one each. I think they'll cancel each other out, but it'll be one each. So they won't. Smashing. It'll be one each though. That's gold draw. Oh man, right. So this, if this next game the same. Don't need to change them. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I've got Hibs three Rangers. I've got three one Rangers. Every week you can do the goal hang, and I like it. So every week I don't do the goal hang. <laughs> so I'm going three 0 to Rangers. To be honest, this is the most confident I've been that we'll concede. Really? I, I, in terms of teams that teams we've played, well, that's true. I seen a, I seen a comment saying something like, "Oh." You need to give Rangers praise, but look at the start of it. Like, obviously, that's nonsense. Like, you could anything could be anybody in this league, but this is the first team you've played so far. That might like, right, okay. I'm a bit, I'm a bit shaky about it, but I think if if we get the first goal, I think it would, I think it's done. I think once we, if we get the first goal and then it came out, the quality we have, we can battle them. I agree. So, final game of the week is Aberdeen v Motherwell at Petardry. I went two one Aberdeen. I've went 3-1, Aberdeen. Mm. I mean, look, off the back of the European... <laughs> that noise was good, though. <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> off the, obviously, off the back of the European successes, success, Motherwell, well done, mate. You had to, you had to get three penalties saved and again you're winning 2-0. Let's put it that way. So, I Aberdeen coming off the back of you, they'll be dead confident in that. Motherwell will be mm. a bit shaky, I think. Uh, and Motherwell won't have enough to beat them on their own tough. Oh well, was that us then, Jack? That's all the game. So I we've got pretty much one, two, three, four. We've got five the same results and one dodgy one where you've picked Hamilton to beat come up. <laughs> the only thing I forgot this week's a teaser, mate. Did you have a teaser then? Yeah, actually I don't have a teaser but I've got like a conundrum question. It's not, oh, it's, not like a, it. it's not like a list or anything like that, and it involves a man we spoke about earlier, Mr. Kenny Miller. Oh, here we go, boom. Let's so, do this. Over his three spells at Rangers, yes. how many goals did he score? And Jesus no, I, Christ. I, I, think it, I think this is in, in the league, by the way. In the league, right. <sighs> Jesus Christ almighty. I can, I'm, I going am... double, I'm going to double, I'm going to double check before I say this, and then somebody in the comments absolutely rinses me for getting around. So how many seasons did they have at Rangers, man? He must have had a solid seven, seven or eight seasons at Rangers. So I'm going to go for 78 goals, mate. 78, right, let me just... Because there was it. one season, there was one season where Kenny Miller was on fire and then he went to Trasbonsuo or Bursaspor. Bursaspor, right. Like after, after we played them in the... Right, he, scored, he scored 20 odd goals and then he left in the January and he was still top goal scorer right, at the end okay. of the year. So, so I'm, I'm going 78. So 78 is your league. What's your total? That's including cup games, stuff like that. Oh, total, man. Jeez, oh, he's definitely, he's got to be over 100 for me. So I'll go for 110. Okay. So his league goals, he got 92. Oh my God. That's ridiculous. Is that um, including championship? Uh, it's just these three spells. Right, okay, that's fine. And I, I think... I know, it must be. It's goals for the club. But uh, in total, including cup games, 116. You are six out. That's actually, that was not a bad wee guess there. So he hardly scored in the cup, is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, I'll take that. I think I've got I think I've got one more wee question for you, if I can find it quickly, because this was a cracker. So in in the group chat while the boys did I go to the football way. They 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 did the the football phone in and they did the questions. Aye. Mm-hmm. And if there's a tiebreaker, they'll ask me to get one for them. And this was an absolute beauty. So it was. Let me Let's do that. It. Hopefully, everybody at home's playing along here. Oh, Make sure so. you subscribe to the channel as well. A couple of cracking questions in here. Wait, it's so all needs a number because if I get the number, that must be sorted. All oh, needs a number. I think you want CJ's yeah, okay. number as well. Judging by some of the comments. <laughs> Don't you worry, I've got that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dirty wee boy. Are you ready for this? I don't, I don't even know if I've asked you this before. 
in total, how many times have Rangers and Celtic faced each other in a cup final? Oh, you've never asked me this. Um, I think it. I think it could be hijacked. I think it could, <laughs> hijacked. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, I'm going to go for. Will you give me like um, two up, two down kind of thing? If you want. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm. I'm going to go twenty six. <laughs> Twenty, twenty. No, you said so. You said twenty six, and you want to go two up or two down. Aye. So two up would be twenty eight, and two down would be twenty four. Aye. It's twenty three, isn't it? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. <laughs> twenty nine. Do you want to know the worst part? I think you asked me this last week. <laughs> did it? Did it? Aye, aye. So aye. That's why I was so confident in twenty six. You bastard. So let me get this straight. I I was an idiot for forgetting to ask you that. Aye, but I was a bigger idiot. You were, you were a bigger idiot because you played it off like you didn't know and then still got it wrong. Jesus Christ. See, if you watch that back, you see the smugness in my face when I went, no, I don't think you've you asked me this. I wasn't, I was, I, I'm, see, I went my head, I was like, I'll ask him that last character. And then as soon as I go to the question, I was like, I'm pretty sure I've asked this before. Bro, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty, I think I said like 78 or something the last time. Oh, it's really good. So you did, aye. Aye. Ignore, ignore me. You can cut that if you want. <laughs> nah, we don't, we don't day cutting on this show. Don't cuts. So you've got me wanting to bum CG and getting that question. Okay, smashing. <laughs> Until next time, man. <laughs> Until next time, Jack. Do you know what? Why don't you do the outro this week, mate? Oh, God, right. Hey. The pressure's on. <laughs> get the guitar. Mate, get the guitar done. And... <laughs> no. Please, please. No. Just right, get the okay. guitar done. Just do one strum, mate. And then just do an outro for us. It's been that long since I touched it. I think it's at a tune. I don't even care. Go, he's one. Be it's, strong. It's, bad, it's badly at a tune. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, remember to <laughs> like and subscribe to Sharp Div and see you Novo, of course. Make sure, <laughs> make, sure, make sure to donate to the charity that uh, we mentioned earlier. Obviously, for yep. a great cause. Follow the Instagram. Give it, a, give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Get the, com- get the comments. But let us know what you want to see. Why the bad the blah? I've clearly not lost the ability to do an outro for a video since I stopped doing videos, as you can see. But, uh, aye. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Cheers, Leo. <laughs>